Hey guys, welcome back to Cool Bike Projects. Great to see you again. Today is a day we've been looking forward to for a long time. We're finally gonna finish the Trek 9200 Resto Mod. Let's get started. So last summer I came across a really interesting project bike. It was an early 1994 Trek 9200. This was one of Trek's very first full suspension designs. At the time, I was mostly interested in seeing what this bike rode like when it was brand new. So we overhauled the wheels, did quite a bit of cleaning up on the parts, put in new cables, brake pads, chain, but we kept it basically stock. And as we anticipated, suspension that's 30 years old doesn't always hold up well. So in this episode, what I wanna try to focus on is upgrading the suspension, front and rear, as well as the cockpit to make this bike not only fit for me, but be a much more trail-worthy bike. Wish us luck. This is gonna be a lot of work. Okay, so I've kind of stripped the bike down again from where it was at. And here you can see we have the original Trek Mogul fork on here. If you look these up, this was pretty uh, ingenuitive back at the time. Lots of bushings, but probably only a whopping 40 millimeters of travel at best. Down here we have the Reese racing shock in the back. Again, at the time it was cutting edge, but even if I order in a seal kit for this, which I have, <laughs> I found out that I've got quite a bit of play in the lower bushings here. So inside of most shocks, you have what's called an eyelet behind the bolt here. And inside of the, uh, the eyelet, there's so much spacing for either a quarter inch bolt, three inch bolt, whatever. But once that thing moves up and down, you know, a few thousand strokes, you can start to wear a groove inside of that eyelet. And if you can't replace those, um, there's not much point of rebuilding the shock because it's going to continue to wear it out. So an alternative idea I've had is what if I was to replace the suspension with something a little bit better, but also longer front and rear. And I think I've come up with a solution for it. So on the back end here, I came across this uh, Fox racing shock. This is a old float R uh, from about 20 years ago. Still in pretty good shape here. Uh, holds air really well. We'll have to do some testing on the canister and possibly replace the, uh, the O-ring seal inside of it. But I did some measuring on this. And if you check and see, the biggest thing is measuring from eyelet to eyelet that the distance is the same. So right now, if I have around, hard to do this one handed here. We'll say about 175 mils of travel, or I should say 175 mils of spacing here between both of these. And so even though we're gonna add about 30 millimeters of more travel distance to it, the difference here from eyelet to eyelet is within two millimeters. So I think what I'm gonna to try to do is go ahead and take off the shock here, make some new spacings for it up here for the top and the bottom, and see if I can't convert this guy over. If that works, I've sourced an old Manitou black elite fork. And back in the day, this thing was awesome. Um, I remember a pro dealing one of these when I worked in a bike shop years ago. And uh, for me, very expensive. This was like 440 bucks brand new. I found one of these at a bike shop for hundred bucks used and still works great. So this will be a pretty big experiment, but we're gonna go from having around 40 millimeters of total travel front and rear to around 80 to hundred, depending on the settings. Okay, here we are at my brother's metalworking shop. He's first of all pulling out the original spacers to uh, make sure he can measure the inside diameter of the eyelet. Uh, inside the eyelet, there's actually a brass fitting, which is press fit. And so he needs to make sure that the gap or the size between that eyelet and the old one matches the frame. Then using some lathe skills that I do not have, He's able to drill out a 3 8 bolt hole for the center and then slowly start to measure and taper down 
uh, two different bushing sizes for the upper and for the lower part of the eyelets. Again, huge shout out to my brother, Chan. He is an amazing engineer in every regard, and I simply could not have done this project without him. And here you can see on the smaller size of the eyelet, he's got the new ones pressed in on both sides, and they look great. Let's do this thing. Okay, a little bit of an upgrade we're doing to this bike. I found a inexpensive uh, used set of riser bars here with the 31.8 stem. This is also about 70 or 80 millimeters long. So it should be a nice, easier setup than what I had on there before. Do a little carbon fiber sandwich. Oh yeah, perfect. That feels pretty good. So again, this is just some lightweight grease here to put on the inside shaft. These are stainless steel bolts. And then I'll actually put some thread locker on the threads to make sure it just doesn't slip once this gets snugged down. Okay, that feels pretty good. The rocker arm went up just a tiny bit, like maybe two millimeters. Got our washer on both sides. So we'll just snug these down just till they're snug. And then we'll take this for a spin at some point to make sure that uh, everything's moving the way it's supposed to. All right, one thing we're gonna check here also, this is our single I think it's a 3 8 bolt that goes through on both sides here for this monocoque. And I'm going to make sure these are also torqued down here with some thread locker as well. All right, I'm excited about this next phase. We have our suspension on here. It looks like it's dialed in. Don't know why I'm so excited about this, but now that we have a, a higher steer tube, <laughs> I don't have to worry about the bar smacking into the frame anymore. So let's go ahead and build this bike back up and see how she does. So as I mentioned before in the first build, this came with some old Paul branded cantilever V-style brakes. Very forward thinking at the time, but unfortunately the spring was long gone. So, found a good deal on some of these Avid 3s to put on here. And this is the original drivetrain for the most part, except for the shifters and the cassette. So we have an LX group on here, but I found some newer, we'll call what we call STX style front shifters. Now, something I'm trying out here also from Rock and Roll Lube is something called Cable Magic. And I was talking to the actual CEO of the company about this, and he swears by this as far as racers and people putting this on just before, uh, you know, a new set of cables. 
but basically just a very small, small amount of this stuff works great. And you don't want this to go down the entire length of the cable, but just as it's going to go on the inside of the housing here. So I'm going to go back before I hit the, uh, the, the cable stop. Put just a tiny bit on there. Wow, that pulls so smooth. This isn't just a plug for a sauna product, guys. This is, dang. I haven't had my SRAM XO shift that good. <laughs> cool. So just want to put a plug in for Mike Carter. Uh, super nice guy here, one of my subscribers on the channel. Over the last month, he's been sending me a couple boxes of leftover spare parts, including this really nice Thompson Elite seat post. So thanks, Mike. Not only will this bike project benefit from it, but my next uh, Marin team frame I'm building up next will have a bunch of your parts on it. Okay, now that we got the uh, new seat post on there and everything else, this is looking pretty sweet. Pump a little polish. And I got one last surprise for this bike. Well, for all my purest friends out there, I think I'm already past the point of no return. But uh, besides changing the suspension and the drivetrain and modifying how much suspension is actually on the bike by quite a bit, we are also going to rebrand this with the newer Trek head badge. Okay, we are lining this thing up. Yeah. We'll put some pressure on that bad boy. <laughs> so something I think is kind of fun about working on a bike is, you know, you can restore something back to exactly as it was. And I know people find a lot of joy in that, but I think it's also a lot of fun just to modify a few things, kind of make it yours in some way. Well, guys, we did it. This bad boy is ready to ride. I would love to take it on a test run for you, but we got about three feet of snow in the backyard right now. So this is gonna have to be a little bit later, but I am pretty happy with how this turned out. The newer uprise bar with the 318 clamp, some newer V brakes, approximately 80 to 100 millimeters of travel front and rear. Real working suspension and a semi-upgraded drivetrain. It's a new seven-speed cassette, new chain, new shifters. So it should be a pretty dope ride here. Again, huge thank you to Mike Carter for sending me a whole bunch of parts. It's definitely made this an easier build to do. And uh, as we get closer to springtime, guys, I know all of us will be out here riding, doing some more work, but uh, definitely over this winter, take a chance to work on your project bike. If there's something you've been wanting to upgrade for a while, get out and do it. This is a fun time to be working on bikes.